morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where in the world you are. This is the voicemail dump truck. We don't sort our trash at all. We, uh, it's a single stream pickup situation here. And that is, that, it's the best way. Garbage we it, want. It's it. New Jersey. It's all trash, right? Uh, oh, no. oh, get out of here, grub. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Ohio ass. <laughs> You're Ohio Welcome ass. to Cleveland. Uh-huh. You know what, Grub? You are the first person to make that kind of a joke about New Jersey. So I salute you, <laughs> Thank sir. you very much. Thank you. Welcome to the voicemail dump truck. A very special version of the voicemail dump truck. We're being we're being tandemly live produced by Jason A. Striker and Jess O'Brien in a very fantastic way. Thank you for all the help. Teamwork. If you put both of our powers together, we're about 80% of as good as Jan Ochoa is at the shit. <laughs> 80% is enough. That's a passing grade. <laughs> Speaking of passing oh, grades, Dan knows nothing about that. Dan Riker, welcome to your first ever dump truck. How are you, sir? Good. Can we operate on a pass-fail situation here? Is that all right? I don't know how you somehow fail the dump truck, but sure, we'll figure out a way to fail you. <laughs> uh, Jeff Grubb, uh, besmirching the good name of New Jersey. Nevertheless, your first dump as well. How are you? I'm, I'm doing real well. Very happy to be here. Very good. If you're not familiar with this show, but are familiar with dumps, You'll feel right at home. This is the voicemail dump truck. It's a call-in show. 707 Exit Flu is how you leave a voicemail for this program. Uh, We can't promise your dump will be heard, but we promise Uh, to take your dump. You know, that's that's our slogan here. Um, My dumps are very audible. Yeah, (laughs) wonderful. Yeah, yeah. yeah, vocally and just (laughs) biologically. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Did the neighbors call the police? How does that work? That's right. Yes, yes. No, I, I told them when I moved in. We brought them a coffee cake. And said, by the way, the, the dumps are going to be loud. <laughs> by the way, the shits are going to be fucking <laughs> off imagine. the charts. Don't worry First about it. I said. Don't call it the cops. a tree falling into the pool. That's just my, that's my turds. <laughs> I, I did tell them. We did bring them a coffee cake, and I was like, by the way, I do some like video game stuff, and it's going to be right in that <laughs> room there. So if you just hear weird yelling and stuff, it's fine. So Lots yeah. of echoey fart sound effects. Yeah. That's normal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want yeah, everyone Luigi. to uh, role play for a second. Close your eyes. Pretend you were one of Dan's neighbors. <laughs> they, the fucking U-Haul pulls up later on that evening. This fucking guy rings your doorbell and you arrive. And <laughs> coffee are cake. Given a coffee cake and then <laughs> an insane explanation about who this person is. <laughs> I'm not kidding. My uh, my next door neighbor is, uh, I met her when I was bringing stuff out of the a truck or something and I had a seven foot tall all cardboard grizzly bear and a giant like game show <laughs> spinning wheel and i'm walking in i'm like oh hi nice to yes. meet you and that yeah. was our first conversation as i'm holding the bear howdy neighbor oh. yes what, oh, what there great. goes what the neighborhood say, what would you say if you're just like you know splitting the shades apart looking across the sheet and just be like honey look what's moving in across the street everyone else on the street is 70 years old and then it's just my dumb ass okay. <laughs> flying what drones around and yeah <laughs> oh man um all right this is a very special edition of voice meltdown truck because we're in the middle we're th- we're we're right in the thick of it uh, folks we're right in the thick of the summer game fest so uh perhaps this is the summer game fest version of the dump truck it won't have anything to do with keely or anything like that but uh that is uh, a little mile marker for you if you're keeping score at home all right we've got plenty of voicemails to get to what are we looking at here just 17 or so oh yeah i think it's uh 17 i added two more this morning before we did some key three stuff um and yeah a couple couple of notes uh, a couple folks called in earlier in the week you know panicking distraught knee-jerk reaction over you know the crazy the crazy news that happened with jeff gersman leaving and all that stuff right and then they called back to recant and felt very bad that they called us freaking out <laughs> and stuff like that so Interesting. hey who just came on the call and messed up the the the, the, the capture oh, you are you the Nelly? is that the rock is that the rock? Is oh, it's it's the, the rock it's the rock holy shit it's the rock black adam i can't hear, hear you he's it's muted fine. Jen, has- came here to promote this trailer. Uh, it's, it's Jared here from the gym, doing it reps, wow. hanging and clanging nice. everybody. Yeah, dude. What do you drink for are. energy? What do you drink uh, for energy? I, I drink it. I drink punching bags for energy. Whoa. <laughs> this whole thing He's right cool. here. 
It's full of Kool-Aid. I'm just going to punch it and just drink the powder that comes from it. Yeah. Gamers, enjoy your gaming. All right. I'm out of here. Thank you. Yeah, the Rock, cool. everybody. Yeah. What a cool dude. Oh, that was yeah. a good surprise. Anything happened on the voicemail dump truck, you guys. Oh, my God. Well, I can't believe The Rock just freaking crashed uh, our dump. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Anyway. Jam anyway, the dump, was, Ochoa. Yeah. The dump. <laughs> Anyway, and yeah, a bunch of people called back in to be like, sorry, I kind of panicked. You guys are great. Never mind. We should, we I, should somehow encapsulate the, the 12 hours of voicemails uh, that we have. Uh, it, yeah, that. it was and very know, sweet, though. You know. Put them into space. Um, right. <laughs> anyway, uh, and also there was a bunch of really great calls, but like sometimes y'all's reception, not so good. Please don't call from like a moving vehicle or the wing of an airplane or anything like that. Uh, call through. Call from a drive through window at 3 a.m. like God nice. intended. Exactly. Nice and quiet. Yeah. Uh, and another, absolutely still. <laughs> I, I also know. I also noticed multiple duders in Okinawa. You guys should go meet up or something. Oh, damn. Um, and also a lot of calls. You might have noticed there is a folder in here that is just called Nugs for Jan. I'm Ooh. saving those because I got a lot of calls vis uh, about Jan's 100 Nugget Challenge. Uh, Jan's not here. He's in the gym preparing yeah. for the 100 Nugget yeah. Challenge, I presume. <laughs> so yeah, a, lot, a lot of commentary on that. A, lot of, a couple pros, a couple cons, a couple of stern warnings about the medical uh, aspects of such a sure. challenge. So I imagine all those calls are people who knew people who had tried. <laughs> got a call from, we got a call from a nurse. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, those will all be for Jan's ears and he's not here. So an obituary skipping. like, please, not again, not again. <laughs> no. Again. yeah so people love you jan they're pleading don't do it and then there's other people being like yeah jan i believe in you so we'll we'll cover those some other time but besides that we got a whole bunch of other calls to show off i think we should give the first pick to grub i, I gotta go with fazoli's i haven't eaten in a fazoli's oh. in a long time oh, so let's make it happen let's go unlimited breadsticks yes yep. fazoli's has been a bit of a running gag okay. the last couple weeks so let's check out Fazoli's, and you have to excuse me. These are so fucking loud in my headphones. I have to take my headphones off. Yes, so, please. Here we go, Fazoli's. I went to Fazoli's. I had the ravioli. Now I'm on the toilet bowly, making brown guacamole. I'm like this because my parents didn't love me. Thank you, caller. Yeah. Oof. Makes sense. Yo, what did he say at the end? I'm like this because my parents didn't love me. That's, that's yes. exactly what he said, that's... and I, I knew it to be true even before he said it. I understand. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's that's, that's why I eat at Fazoli's as same, well. Same here, right? You know, you yeah, that's that the reason my parents took me to Fazoli's. Yeah, <laughs> that's a hell of a tagline. The uh, the first time I felt like I ever really made it out post college was I moved to Shawnee, Kansas, where actually my dad lives now, and there was a Fazoli's was the closest place, and it was like just across uh, Quivira Road there and i was like holy shit i can get to a fazoli's and have unlimited breadsticks in like three minutes from my house and i would go there and i would just buy a bunch of alfredo dips and the breadsticks and i would just eat like you know 14 breadsticks dipped in alfredo right and i was like i made it i made it. i got i got a place here I, right. i'm out of college i'm a graduate yeah and I made it. Eat it in three minutes hung over it's amazing I if made i can it. make it here i can make it anywhere exactly. <laughs> how dan how did you not get scurvy for like a large portion of your Honestly, life i'm not a, not a doctor but like i really do think my body is just very wow. used to a certain type of eating because like i all through college i really didn't eat like a fruit or a vegetable and when i would go to like my grandparents house on thanksgiving and there'd be actual food there and stuff i ate like green beans i would feel really sick to my stomach but like oh, people make all the jokes <laughs> like, enjoy your diarrhea from taco bell and stuff no i eat a shit ton of taco bell and mcdonald's and i will feel a hundred percent fine yeah mm -hmm. give me like a healthy meal you're more so when i was a kid being an addict you're describing the behavior of an addict. Like I wake up and I've got nuggets on my nightstand. I need to start my day with them or anything. It's, it's, it's just so psychotic to me that, like, you describe, like, eating healthy as, like, you know, the sickness. 
No, I'm good now with it. He's a vegetarian now, practically, right? Bach makes me really in a healthy stomach. I'm a vegetarian. I eat me with you recently. No, 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 no. She said, kind of. I'm like 95% vegetarian. On Friday nights, I get my dumbass Taco Bells and my McDonald's and all that. But throughout the week, like I have like, you know, Beyond Burgers and stuff. I have tofu bowls. I have a lot of quinoa. Like I, I'm not eating a bunch of vegetables, but I'm eating like, I mean, vegetable based things. Dan didn't give me a kale. Yeah. Kale, kale, yeah. Kale, yeah. Kale, yeah. I, I went, hang on. I, I, in Seattle, once I saw a bumper sticker that yep. said, uh, no, it was, it was a billboard that said, like, oh, something, kale, yeah. And I took a picture and I tweeted it and I said something like, oh, if Steve Austin was dead, he'd be rolling in his grave. And Stone Cold Steve Austin responded. He's like, no, nah, man, I dig kale. It's healthy for you. <laughs> Give me a kale, yeah. Kale is Steve Austin improved. Mm-hmm. Awesome. <laughs> I'm really happy for you. Um, that's, the, the, I just feel like you describing uh, eating, uh, green beans for the first time as this like <laughs> horrific event I, that's what happens water. right you, you if you don't eat vegetable your body needs to like process it and that's like muscles in his body that just weren't being used for years like, yeah, like, like atrophied when you go to yeah. space like, your like, body's not used to gravity and then you get the back same to thing. Earth, yep. and your yeah. body's like what the fuck it's is exactly. this? he was basically an astronaut you're, yes, you're right you. That's exactly the experience astronauts uh, go through when they thank leave you. the uh, gravitational pull of Earth. It's I know. Amazing. I will also um, vouch for Taco Bell. It has only healed me. It has never harmed me. I've yes, said this before. Yes. I will say it over and over again. Food. Taco I'm Bell. Absolutely with you. Yes. Yep. Taco we, we Bell fixes it. my I, body. It I lived behind me. a Taco Bell for for a good chunk of my life. Actually, like there was a fence uh, that distributed, you know, the, the, the Taco Bell from me, um, but. There was a there was a hole in the fence like there's like two boards, and I adjacent sne- shaped hole adjacent shaped hole yeah that I would <laughs> sneak through <laughs> and just fucking go and get my sixty nine cent you know soft shell tacos. Hell yeah! Oh god, it was wonderful. Love oh. a walkable city. Yeah, uh, yep. Dan Riker, what's yes. your voicemail of choice? I guess it'd be appropriate to do the four Dan one. Mm-hmm. Sometimes Let's these are traps, but we'll find out. Is this, never know. this is a trap? Yeah, it could know. be a whammy. I heard the news today, so that means that this may be my opportunity to say this. Dan fucking Riker, you may not remember me, you may not be able to pick my face out of a crowd, but I know that you remember that bet, and I know that you know that you owe me five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, you're fucked. Damn, Dan. this is guy. Oh man, this guy's got your number, and it's seven hundred seven exit flu. What? <laughs> yeah. And if, don't, don't think of remember? all the people in your life you could possibly owe five dollars to. Jesus Christ. I I pride myself on making good on uh, oh, I, I, the hat you. thing. I'm still waiting on the edible hat, but other than that, uh, what the fuck could that be? What could it oh, possibly don't, mean? Don't act like. Come on, you don't know. You owe five dollars all over this town. I want more details. Call in again. Make this some fucking Riddler, you know, puzzle. You call in next <laughs> yes. next week. Right, let's Absolutely. keep this train rolling here. Yeah, Damn, I, I want to find out what this is. Yes. Okay. And, I, and, I, and I'll send it. I'll Venmo it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's yeah. good about it. Oh. He'll give you a free cameo. Right. Don't worry. <laughs> well, that's one five. So. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Bagalar, what is your voicemail of choice mail? Uh. Let's do uh, bathroom technology. All right. You have found this week's Hawaii Joe. Yes. <laughs> you, you win a lovely voicemail from Hawaii Joe. Yo, yo, it's Joe from Hawaii. Hey, what do you guys think is going to be the next innovation in, like, bathroom technology? You know, <laughs> like, like the days are a thing. And I wish they had wider adoption in our country, right? But that's mm. all well and good. But, like, that can't, we can't have reached the pinnacle of, like, shit-taking, you know? Like, this is it. Like, this is the best it's going to get. Like, no, this, there's got to be somewhere we can go, you know? And, like, the next person to invent it is going to be, like, a fucking quadrillionaire, right? So, like, what ideas you got? You know what I'm saying? Three seashells? Anything? Later. All right, so I'm going to patent this right now. I think if you just say you're patenting something, yep, I think. Yeah, that's how that works. Yeah, that's how it works. Okay. Mm. I had not thought of this until right when this guy started talking, but the first thing that popped into my mind is, 
Okay, so I'm terrified all the time of clogging toilets. I've done it a few times, and it's always the worst thing that can happen to you. Because I wipe a lot, and so there's always... I, every time I take a shit, I, like... Jason, Jason, we've talked about me shitting a lot. Yeah, you, um, you do the, you you do the mummy thing. You just wrap it around your no, head like a goddamn always, mummy. You've always been wrong. That was Hanson or something. No, nope, that was not and Hanson. No, you cr well, you're no. a crumpler? I'm a crumpler. You just use two sheets at a time like a man. No, I use two I sheets like at a time. 45 sheets every wipe. I, I so it's like, I have to flush four he or five times. He has such an aversion to touching his own shit that he uses a big fucking wad of, yeah. of toilet paper, yeah. I did. Now, that, yeah Ooh, that's weird that I don't want to touch poop. Uh, no. no, listen, that's why. But I, you can wash your hands afterwards. If there's an incidental off. touch of poop, you wash your fucking hands afterwards. I wash my hands no matter what. I don't want any poop stuff touching my hands at all. But here's Man. my idea. Okay. I'm so worried about flooding toilets because it's just a bad fucking time, especially if it's in a private private residence. That's why I mm -hmm. prefer to poop at Walmarts and Targets. Yeah. But yeah, of course, he leaves his own house and poops. I don't like pooping my own house because there's always the risk that if it floods, it's my problem. So. Yeah, yeah, if, yeah. Uh, what it, why hasn't anyone made something where it's like, you know how if you have a sink, like a garbage disposal, right? <gasps> Yeah. Like you flip a switch and it, like what if you had that like oh, man. in the toilet? Yeah, so just get a whisk. It goes down into Clog Town, it like garbage disposes <laughs> your poop and chops you are it up. So and... stupid. Why? Tell me why that's stupid. Yeah, that's, that's, like, like, no, that's like a that's really a good idea. idea. <laughs> Yo, yeah, it's a great idea. Oh, uh, let me just shit into this blender and see what happens. Well, it's like it's <laughs> down it like halfway in the, in the U bend. Like no, yeah, because the, those answer. mechanical parts are going to become like deadly weapons after a week. Dude. Like anyone who has there ever has to fix it. Like you, you talk about that? the problem so of it. People fix my my, my, my disposal. You want they don't that die shit under doing your that. Taint? You could. want a fucking blender under your taint at no, all times? In like halfway through like the S tube situation, like you wouldn't even see it. Yeah. You'd hear it. It's loud, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I just don't think it's like the move to like, why do you need to just like destroy? No. What, what else is I think water? it's going to smell bad. I guess it's going to smell bad. I would flush as much. First off, it's going to use more energy that where it doesn't need to be used, right? So, like, could it use it like, out. Well, no, we wait, hang on. This, what about this for a no, while? Hang on, hang on. What about like like the water wheels and stuff? Like, you can make like hydro power stuff. So, wouldn't oh, you like so, could you it, asshole. Could it provide wheel its shit. own power? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, don't worry. I got my uh, shit blenders powered by a water, water wheel, wheel shit blender. Like, like shit it's blender. Amish made. You gotta learn how to brand stuff, Backlar. It's not a shit blender. So the bidet, okay, the bidet is like the best innovation. The first line of defense. And we're very bidet. late to the party in the in the world of bidets, for sure. Yes. To answer this question in a somewhat serious matter, I think it's, I don't know. Like, I think, like, what would be better? I don't, and like, so Dan, also. The There's a custom to, poll in the chat. The way is this to, a good like, idea? The way to not clog a toilet is just a courtesy flush that's how you do it yeah, but that's sometimes you make like four or five a, courtesy flushes every shit sometimes you make four or five uh, dude four to be careful five i err on the side of caution crazy. in all things including okay. shitting I, I have not clogged a toilet in ever since i've started using two pieces per wipe like just two pieces okay. per wipe it's that fine I almost, I almost never get because i have two in the way i almost never get shit on my hands i'm yeah. just careful how many ply we talk in here? Yeah, you can never break through really easy. Well, it's, it's 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 a normal like probably like the two or three ply. It's not cheap toilet paper, but I mean sure. it's like hey. this is that's what it's for. That's why it's serrated there. Like you just the break it off when and you, you go and yeah, you're you're not go. Like, wash rag. You're you're finding toilet paper that two uh, of them will do it. The, wait, the wash rag? What? <laughs> Jan in the chat. Goes, <laughs> do you guys not have toilet gloves? <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is a very good joke. Does no, uh, no one else have a poop knife? What are you talking about? The oh, toilet oh. glove is what I was thinking about in terms of like what the technology is. Like, yeah, just for Dan, put it, have him wear a glove and then you throw it out scoop every it, time or you wash it every it time. Yeah. Just like yeah. the idea scoop that somebody would like fucking shit into a toilet and then like flip a switch after to just shit just, like scramble it, it right all up is so insane to me I would, I would buy it right now yeah. I, would, I would yeah I would do that okay. find me a contractor I think that's that'll great. do that I think that's a great idea it's about uh, time we blended this shit okay yeah come on the tagline now you're getting the branding shit, shit. Time we blended shit this shit. Blending. by the way for what it's worth the poll pretty much split down the middle uh 82 people say this is a terrible idea 79 people think it's a great idea and if me and dan had voted that that would have been yeah i didn't vote either so yeah there's a, uh, a video on youtube from 2017 called modeling a toilet with a blender and it's like in cad and someone just <laughs> built this all out so it's, <laughs> it's incredible um so yeah, someone's on your on your thing already dan so you I, better I, be I'd love to have to, to that truck. 
I'd love to have to service that. That'd be a good, yeah. what a great gig right. that would be. Some some plumber call the in and tell us why this is not fritz. feasible. Yeah. So tell, tell us why this isn't feasible, you plumbers out there. Call in. Tell, tell us why this hasn't happened yet. Because I think it's a good idea, and there must be some sort of logistical big deal Shoot problem sink, with Dan. it. It's because Shoot no one thought of yeah. it yet. That's why it doesn't exist yet. All right. <laughs> Except so. the guy grew up found. God damn. <laughs> Jason. Oh my god, how the What's fuck do I choice? follow that up <laughs> besides with crazy piss? Yeah, yes. <laughs> it's one of those days, yes. folks. Crazy piss. Hey, what's up? This is James from Ontario, California. And I have a question. What is the craziest place you took a piss? Oh, no. Uh, like right now, I'm redoing my restroom and I really had to pee. So I don't have a toilet and I pissed in my sink. Yeah. Oh, I've been yeah. there. I've been there. All right. What is the craziest place you pissed in? Uh, all right. I've, I've got, a, I've got a few. I've got a few. Yeah, let's hear them. Um, mm-hmm. one in particular, and I think I've, I've told these stories on, on, Bombcasts or whatever before. Uh, one was that we were at a 311 concert and we were at a gas station across the street, which was the only fucking bathroom. Uh, there were no porta potties there. Anyway, it was my turn to go into the men's room next, but you know how ladies seem to form a line um, and it takes them much longer, you know, for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. One, uh, one woman, uh, you know, said, hey, can I go in with you? And I'm like, well, I'm not going to give up my turn. I'm going to go in there. And I said, yes, that's fine, but I'm going in with you. So I pissed in the sink while she pissed in the toilet, and we <laughs> bonded. Uh, yeah. And and after that, we didn't look at Secure each other. Moment. Yeah, we didn't yeah. do that. Uh, there was one time I was coming back from a, a work party, and uh, we were stuck in Minneapolis traffic. And I really absolutely needed to go. There was no holding it at that point. And I told uh, Benjamin Reeves that uh, you need to let me out on the highway here because we're stuck in fucking deadlock traffic. Uh, Mm -hmm. You need to let me out here. And I ran to the nearest building that I could find, which happened to be a church. Uh, Mm -hmm. So I... Right. (laughs) I pissed pissed on the church. Uh, Um and then I had the midnight sh- showing of. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Jason. Keep going, please. No, that's fine. I just I, I, I had to find them afterwards, and uh, that was <laughs> that was kind of rough. But uh, other mm. than that, uh, you know, your your standard like hotel uh, garbage can, you know, in the hallways <laughs> or, or, or whatever. Yeah, yeah nope. there's there's been a couple of those as well. Coffee makers, so, right? Fine. Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Coffee Who among right. us? Yeah, right. I, uh, it was the midnight showing of Matrix Revolutions. What, what was the second one? And, uh, yeah, yeah it was, so sure. we like, we were like really excited, but we also were like at that age, we're like, well, we're going to bring in a bottle of vodka in our cargo shorts. Like, so we're going to yeah. do that. But, and like, there's a lot of previews and I didn't want to miss it. Uh, so I'm right. drinking, I got to go pee real bad. And by the time we got around to the end of the, like the, the highway fight, I'm like, well, okay, I am, I am going to miss parts of this movie, Oh no! but I'm going to have, I'm going to have to like try to get up. And I, I, I had to go so bad at this point when I stood up, it's painful. Like that's how oh, happy it was. Yeah. Oh, my so I'm goodness. like, okay, well I'm standing up. I have to commit now. Uh, I get out of the movie theater. And I don't know which way to go for the bathroom, but the door, the exit right well, is like right there. So way. I just took off a shoe and I put it in the doorway and I just ran out and peed on the side of the theater right there in the rocks and everything like that. Wow. I just ran back yeah. in and cut the rest of the movie. Okay. So, yeah. Not bad. Yeah. 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 I, I was probably 17. It was right around the time the white stripes were getting big. And um, <laughs> seventeen. For Thank you, Kevin Arnold. <laughs> well, no, it's involved, this, this does involve uh, the White Stripes. We uh, lived in Kansas City. Me and my friends, my friends Charlie and Ryan, we bought tickets to a White Stripes concert in St. Louis, which is like a four-hour drive down I-70 from Kansas City. And I needed to piss so bad. Oh, and by the way, I also had it in my head that, like, because on their album covers, they always wore white and red. I think I thought that at White Stripes concerts, everyone just wore all white and red. So I convinced my friends to buy, like, red <laughs> pants and white shirts. and like, So we're nice. all just in the car looking like idiots. And I'm in the back seat. Charlie and Ryan are up front. And I'm like, guys, I have to pee so fucking bad. And they're like, we are going to be late to the concert. We are like, you know, we hit some traffic back there or whatever. 
And so at a certain point, we couldn't pull over to a gas station. They didn't even want to let me out to like pee on the side of the road Those or anything. Those are bad friends, Dan. Well, we had to get there. We were going to miss the white stripes. And so um, I remember there was no one on the road, really. We had a wide berth. Uh, and I unrolled the window in the back seat, and I put my legs over the <laughs> oh, front, shit. and I kind of thrust my business up there, yep. and uh, I think, like, you know, the wind, you're going like 70, and stuff's probably just flapping around. Wait, I'm having a hard time, like, visualizing and your actual position. This is the like, back seat. Like, is this, this the left side? Like, the, okay. Yeah, back seat, right this? side, and I'm just like, that. I'm just imagining, and, uh, like, a whale... Okay. Huh. Yeah. And then so you, your wiener's hanging out. Window. Out I just peed out the window on the highway. Hour. On I seventy. Yeah. That had yeah. to have most of the back in the car. I think sure. it did, and then I think I had to try to like kind of. I realized that right away, and I think I had to kind of like tuck my business along the right yeah. side of the window so it would like spray out a little bit. But right. yeah. Huh. You got some good core strength. Uh, <laughs> back then, back then, I was, I was quite the <laughs> He was a young man. He was a young yeah. man. Young man. Yeah. 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 I. Uh, <laughs> I yeah. had to pee. I, I have peed on Wall Street because it was four in the morning. I had to fucking pee, so I just chose some some fucking corner, and it was like the financial district of Wall Street. I don't know why I was walking through. Oh, there we go. But that I could I could have been arrested. Um, but yeah, nobody was fucking there. Uh, that was like on my birthday, so I was like busting full of alcohol. So and it's fucking February and it's freezing and I am hot pissing on Wall Street. Yeah, um, it's nice. And also, and I also, like you know, like subway stations, they ain't got yeah. bathrooms. Who and also, like, in a like I pissed as recently yeah. outside as October last year because I was in New York. I was coming back from a friend's house in Brooklyn and we drank there, go straight through me. I peed before I left, fucking five minutes yep. into my walk away. I gotta pee like crazy. Yeah. I'm like, it's COVID times. So I'm looking for a place that's open. No places. It's only 1130, but no convenience stores are like letting me use the bathroom or anything. So it's like, okay, I'm forced to piss in the subway station in a corner. The it's piss a, corner. It's their own fault, really. Like, yeah. What are corners for? Uh, exactly. But it's harder tr- to do as a lady because it's like, no, okay, I, I have it. to kind of like lean against my back against the piss wall and hope I'm not touching p- old piss. And I mean, the whole situation, it's difficult. If you're in a corner, you're touching piss. Uh, Popple Tree 2 in the chat says, Hot Pissing on Wall Street is my favorite Billy Joel album. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, not bad. Uh, not bad. <laughs> Billy Joel is pissed on Wall Street. There's no way yeah, he has totally. Yeah, totally. Uh, someone earlier real quick was said, uh, cut my shit into pieces. This is my mm. last resort. I've been thinking about <laughs> yes. that for a real long time. Uh, yeah. gosh, Everyone oh, knows yes. it. Um, and uh, also w- on New, or- New Orleans at a at a warehouse party, they had like literally fucking two porta potties. So the line was like 30 people deep for both of them. Who knows if people were doing drugs in those too? So it's like they, this line ain't moving, and everyone's mm. on the line complaining about how they're they're about to piss their pants, like yeah. loudly complaining about that, which makes me feel like I'm gonna piss my pants even more because the stress level is going sure. up. The, the vibes are sure. are piss vibes. So I'm like, <laughs> this is a warehouse party. What the fuck am I doing? Who cares? So I found like a rock nearby. And Just there was some other rock. There were, this was Halloween, by the way. So I was like pissing like five feet away from some dude dressed up as a zombie cowboy. We like we're just like chatting while pissing. Like, look, yep. that's the beauty like, hey, of man, it. Everyone I'm not saying I'm not on that line. I'm not going on that line. That's stupid. We're just pissing, talking about how those people yeah. on the line are dumb as hell. <laughs> Everyone pisses. Um, I'm in a bathroom that was on fire with John Carson from Game Informer. On fire? Wait, what? Hmm. Why yeah, is it on fire? Loco in Minneapolis, and uh, we had to pee really bad. Jason's been there. Yeah. And uh, we went down, and someone had thrown some stuff in the garbage can, and it, like, caught on mm. fire. So, like, while me and John are in there drunk and peeing, like, like I don't remember if it's firemen or, like, guys that worked there with the fire extinguisher went in there while we were pissing, and it's like, there's just open flames behind us. You should, you should have pissed on the fire. Yeah. Sounds like a music it's video. flammable. God, no damn it. Flammable, Dan. What have you oh done? But we've been drinking alcohol all night. And no. Alcohol. No. no. It's it's still not. Like no, on alcohol this. removes water from your body, dude. It doesn't put yeah, it. It's it's like going through your, your piss. It's going through your your kidneys and your liver, so the alcohol yeah. stays in you. Oh, uh, oh, okay. Um, okay. You'd one, have to have a really interesting medical problem if your pee is I, flammable. <laughs> I probably do. Is there a, is there a house episode about this? <laughs> No, there's a back to school though. Um, so <laughs> I was coming back uh, from the city on the path train going to Hoboken. I was very intoxicated and I was at the point where like it didn't matter. The only thing I decided was that I was not pissing on the train. Like I wasn't going to piss my no. pants on the train, right? Yeah, no, no, no. So you hit that point and I, I, I had to like literally hold myself, like squeeze myself, which is very upsetting. Yeah. I made it up the stairs 
And the way it was described to me was I found a corner that I thought was a corner, but it <laughs> wasn't. Like I was so drunk that I thought I was safe in a corner, but I was really just in front of like a fucking regular, you know, fence like just a straight up fence that like people could see right through <laughs> and, it's, wow. and, I, and i was Jesus. acting like i had i had found some sort of like relief but it was just this it was just a freaking fence it was plain old fence and i was just being, being into it in front of like everybody nice. everybody that's it pretty drunk pretty pretty stupid a very long uh, time ago nevertheless but uh yeah and then and then there's that thing you did to me on the party bus uh <laughs> Have you told that story? No. <laughs> well, boys, <laughs> you I don't I was very drunk. I don't you probably remember better than me. Uh <laughs> so I had a birthday uh party in Brooklyn for my 40th. Oh and we yeah. Had like a, this is uh, like 10 years ago. <laughs> that was a good joke. And then um <laughs> we had a party bus back to my house in Jersey and Dan was on the bus with a couple other people. And I had just gotten we were drinking on the bus a bunch. And I just, I don't know, like it was an hour ride. It wasn't too bad, but I, for the last 25 minutes had to like, I had a piece so bad. It, it kind of matched that Hoboken story where like where <laughs> I was, I was grabbing myself you for were sure. Right. Panicking. Yeah. I was panicking and like, I, I, like it was too crazy. And, and like everyone's laughing and I'm laughing and I'm trying not to laugh because the more you laugh, like just like little little mm -hmm. bits are like and i'm and losing, so i'm like rocking back and forth in this party bus so badly <laughs> like who am i sitting next to who am i fucking sitting next to <laughs> this gigantic colossal asshole okay who looks over to me and he's like oh what's wrong jeff you gotta be you gotta be and he starts <laughs> his fucking hand he flattens it like this so that it's the prime fucking poking shape and he's just like blank 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 <laughs> right into my <laughs> Like right into here, like right into the I side of the my gut. Is, but I figured it was in that general area, dude. It, you don't know where, where the bladder it, is. You have one, dog. It's in the lower torso. So that's where. Where, I was do, where does it feel like you have a bladder? There's a bunch of shit down there. I don't know. It what? Felt <laughs> like it felt like it was somehow like rupturing and just like going back inside me. Like that's how <laughs> fucked up. Dude, it I was felt. trying to help you. I was trying to make it so that it didn't it come was, out. It what? was no. so bad. I could not. It was it, like, you know, when you're just like, you can't see anything else. Like it was just the piss. Like it was just me That's and awful. the piss. I couldn't even. Your vision's going yellow. It yeah. Was insane. <laughs> Seeing yellow. The bus pulls up to my house. I couldn't even make it inside the house. I just <laughs> hobbled up to the side of my house and just pissed all over the <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a Dad, picture Dad. of you like climbing, like running up the hill to pee. I must have looked like a penguin hill. or some dumb ass shit. Like I couldn't. Oh, it was bad. I got, I got to ask, Dan, if, if you had made. Bacalar piss his pants on yeah. his birthday. Yeah. What would you have felt? I made my dad shit his pants on his 50th birthday. And oh. it's the funniest fucking thing <laughs> I've ever right. seen. Yeah. Yes, everyone knows that. that's what 50th birthdays are. That's the shit. Wait, in the what is your dad sitting on his bench? Resigned resigned shit. Shit. Yeah, I've got a picture of my dad sitting on a bench, fully clothed in New Orleans, just resigned and sighing and shitting his pants. <laughs> because he had his shit so bad and it was like we've been drinking it's like five, four in the morning walking through a hotel I, was like, I gotta get to a bathroom I gotta get to a bathroom I was like oh what's wrong like, Polly got a poopy this Polly got a poopy like, fuck up if you make me laugh I'm gonna shit my pants and that's the worst thing you could have said I started dancing around I'm like I'm Polly I got a poopy poopy <laughs> get the fuck up and I kept doing it and he just sat on a bench and shit oh it. Jesus Christ you're a horrible God. man yes no, he is I, I just couldn't believe you were doing it to me like everyone else was like oh damn leave him alone and you were just like oh I, you're so I would have, bad dad i'm warning you right now if you ever do anything like that to me i will punch you in the face oh, we're co-workers this is this a is the warning situation yeah. i will punch you in the face if you do <laughs> that to i can't me. be mad about it like, oh, yes. you can't because i'm warning you i will punch you in the face <laughs> and it'll and be a bucket list thing to that's... punch dan reichert in the face yep that is the what proper... a dream come true for me by so, the way, don't fucking here, do it. I want to. Here's Backlar. Describe this for the audio folks. Here's Backlar coming up from the side of his house uh, like a gremlin. <laughs> oh, please focus. Please focus. Oh, my. <laughs> he, he's, he's like a gremlin. He, that's, it looks like um, it looks like early man discovering how to pee. It looks like a birthday is. party in signs when you see the alien walk by. <laughs> yes. Right. <laughs> <Which is> like... <laughs> 
<laughs> right, yeah. That is that is Sasquatch just like coming out of the woods. Why is that oh. the first time I see that photo? I actually have three of them. That's just the first one I grabbed. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna need that photo because I have to edit later. Uh, for things. I have to edit the for signs things. joke. Dude, yeah. That is so sick. Oh yeah. I think what? I'm spitting there. I think I was just yeah. spitting. <laughs> trying to spit the pee out. Yeah. I was just like, <laughs> it was what? such a relief that like I needed to gather myself because the ground is like fucking spinning. Oh shit. Wow. Uh, God, how do I move on from this? This is a fun anyway. podcast. I like this one. Yes, okay, 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 okay. Okay, uh, okay. It's my, it's my, well, actually, it's not my choice. It's the chat's choice. Which of these do you guys like? I'll do the jam thing. What's the chat oh. choice? Oh, it's Christ. the first one, the first one I see. I will, I will click on. The, the impossible pivot back into voice, man. <laughs> Oh, they can't see it. Jess's fault. Okay, Jess's fault. Right. I was actually thinking of playing that one myself. Jess's fault. Here we go. This one's more like Jess's fault. Um, so speaking of masturbating with Icy Hot, uh, <laughs> I had a friend in high school who came to school one day with a particularly orange hand and uh, tried to tell us all that it was uh, some kind of melanoma, something about a, he had a skin condition some type of rash, really tried to, you know, obfuscate it deeply. And then uh, we ran into his younger sister later on that day, and she threw him under the bus and let all of us know that she caught him masturbating with his tanning lotion, and this may be a little TMI. We were all very close, but his dick was completely orange. It was as orange <laughs> as his hand, and it was pretty funny. It was like that for about a week. All right, Thanks. love you guys. Bye. Oh. oh, I thought no. that was fun. <laughs> that is fun. Did he show orange. off the penis afterwards? Like, yeah, I did this. Here's my orange dick. I, I like, think I think the implication, yeah, is that like since his sister told them, they were like, we got to see it. Whoa. What's it look like? What's it look like? And boys just like throwing their dicks cone. off to each other. So, yeah. <laughs> no, like, Man. I mean, when, if you've got carrot cock, I feel like you have to. Right. Just, like, if someone tells me, like, dude, my dick is bright orange, I'm like, all right, I got to see that. Like. Just yeah. like the dick tattoos, remember? Like, I gotta see that. For sure. You know. Someone's, if someone asks to see your carrot cock, you say yes. Yes. yes exactly. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows it's a that. special circumstance. You say uh, carrot cock, I say yes. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Grubb, what's your choice? Mm. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm a man of science. I'll go with a scientist calls in. Great. That's right. related adjacently to... Uh, kind of, sort of, what the previous call right. sort of, kind of, uh, adjacently about. Okay. Hey, Dumpers. Uh, just a quick update to tell you that for science, of course, I put a bit of sunblock on my uh, bum hole and of no course. particular uh, side effects noticed. So, go for it. Um, so, a uh, bit, of, bit of clarification. I was using uh, a Factor 50 uh, sensitive or skin orientated mm. sunblock with full of aloe vera. So whether that made any difference, I don't know. But I guess your mileage may vary. But go for it. Okay. Uh, also, if Bacalar's ever in this neck of the woods, uh, I'll put I can put him in touch with the local skinny dipping group. Uh, seems he might enjoy that kind of thing. All right. Thank you, dumpers. So now we Thank know. You. Now we know. Thank like it, it no stingy know. on the bum holy. I, no I get stingy it. Stingy on the dingy. Yeah. Just, yeah the the, the butthole loves aloe vera. There's also not Who a lot of. When is your your butthole at a risk of getting sunburned? So you well, missed this. Yeah, but you we missed did this. cover this. Okay. Um, okay. I'm really yeah. surprised that you have not caught up on all dump truck cannon. No, However, no. I will fill you in. Um, I understand you've had a lot of onboarding going on dump truck catching up on all of them was not part of, of the onboarding, course, but yeah. uh yeah we covered this uh we were talking about how people sun their buttholes some as a semi-spiritual practice i believe or a uh silicon valley uh, kind of like jerk off crystal energy energy sort of thing sure. you don't um, vaccinate your kids but you do sun your butthole That's exactly. yeah you know priorities yeah. yeah um so, yeah, we were saying, like, wh you know, the worst kind of sunburn must be a butthole sunburn, right? That's got to be terrible. We were like, well, you probably put, you know, sunscreen on it. And, we were, and I was like, wouldn't that burn? Because I would think that would burn. Because it's kind of sensitive area. I don't really know. But according to this guy, I mean, he did seem to use the sensitive one with the aloe vera. 
Right. If you got like a really cheapy one, would that stuff burn instead? It, it, okay. I love that he seems to have done this just because we talked about it. So I think another respect scientist, the power of the, of the dump. Yeah. I think another scientist did call in and report that they did th this as well, but he didn't oh. have as charming of an accent. So sorry, buddy, you didn't For make science. the cut. Um, you mentioned science. the worst sunburn being there, and I was trying to think if there's a worse one. And the only thing I could think of is like, you know, like when they do open heart surgery and they actually like open you up. Jesus, like, what if they yeah. did that outside and like left you there for a while, <laughs> and you like fuck? got all your internal organs Left you there sunburned. for a while. What? what? I'm what? sorry. They're like, an experiment. They're like, can you sunburn your organs? This and sounds like, like something. This open. sounds like something Greek gods would do to each other to punish each other, Dan. Yeah, Jesus. Like a fatality, yeah. But I mean, could trailers. your organs sunburn? Like in that situation? Yeah, your organs probably aren't big fans of sunlight. I'm gonna guess. I would imagine, which probably is why they're on the inside. Yeah. yeah, but they could sunburn anything. And it, it I would, think so they, they could yes. back up. You would be hurting could. internally, right? Yeah, yeah, dude. yeah. Well, like, do they like have? The, do your I organs mean, have a lot of like nerve endings? Like that's like your yeah pain nerve endings. I, I bet mean, if someone like, poked your lungs with a fork, it would suck. <laughs> that's a safe well, yes, assumption. Many reasons. Yeah, that's, so I bet there's that nerve endings in there. There is something to be said about going full blown Dan too fast. Yeah, here we are. Like, we're here, everybody. <laughs> like, uh, how you doing? All right. Anyway, what's next? full blown Dan. What's your What's your next voicemail? Uh, pineapples. <laughs> okay, pineapples. What are those? Dang, I love doctor. pineapples. They're great. Uh, I just fucking found out that um, pineapples grow from the ground. I. I don't know why, but I always thought they like grew from trees. Maybe because they're called apples and apples <laughs> grow from trees. I don't know, but I'm like freaking the fuck out. I had, I had no idea pineapples grew from the ground. What? I Googled, maybe they also grow on trees? Nope. Pineapple trees do not exist. They are a lie. Uh, okay. My world view has been shattered. Uh, love you guys. Bye. See, I really would have wished we asked Dan before. I, would have, I, would have guessed trees. I honestly would have guessed trees. Yeah. I, me too. I would have guessed trees too, though. Yeah. yeah. But once I look at them, I'm like, oh, they do look like the kind that grow out of the ground with the giant green top that, like, yeah. Up. That makes sense. Right. Yes. I think there are, yeah. outside of apples, there are almost no fruits or vegetables that I don't know for sure if they're from trees or the ground. Yeah. Oh. Well, I want to ask potatoes. you. Like, I don't know um, if potatoes yeah. are trees or if potatoes are like. Oh yeah, the potato tree. Yeah, the potato I don't tree. Know, like, well, let's show, let's ask, ask him. Know. Yeah, let's ask him. Me? Okay, tomatoes. Tomatoes, Dan. Tree. God damn it. Wrong. They look like apples, and apples are definitely trees. Well, well let, let's let's. It looks like it. Let's, they grow up a plant like, like, like a vine. Like, yeah. Multiple choice. Multiple oh. choice. Multiple choice. Okay, okay, okay. we're we're going. The the, the three, three choices are tree bush of some sort or vines okay. and underground root 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 sure I don't think i knew there were things that grew underground okay fuck off oh. no no, 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 all no, no, no listen, i understand what roots are and i know the trees like the base and like it goes deep deep underground but there are vegetables and fruits that grow underground and dan you've Mario seen cartoons too. where like like carrots, like they pull them out Radishes. of the ground. Like, oh, like Mario eat. too. Like, but yes, yeah, but I, I, look, I don't base that. I don't say because I saw that in Mario, that must be how it is in real life. Like, <laughs> but surely, a completely separate thing. But surely that was your first exposure with the concept <gasps> of vegetables growing underground. Honestly, I've never thought of that in my life. I'm not shitting you at all. I did all not right. realize wow. any vegetables grew underground. That's one of your like choices. Like a carrot? Dude, you never see like a carrot? I would have said a bush or a tree. <laughs> It, it, the, I'm not, I never thought of this in my no, life. This is, no, this is no. I'm not complaining at all. This is you could not have said a better thing for the first episode of Voicemail Dump Truck with That's Dan incredible. Riker. I think this is perfect. This okay, is so so potatoes, potatoes. Now that you know that some stuff can grow underground, bush or tree, where do you think potatoes come from? Tree. Those, those are those are roots. So they're underground. That, Yes. Yes. So wait, no. if you saw a field, would it just look like grass and there'd be thousands of potatoes under there? Well, it looks like, like you know, leaves, different kinds of leaves and stuff yeah, like that, basically. Like yeah. that, so the top the green, of the leaves are the, the top green part sticks out. Yes. Yeah. What, about, never, what about corn? Do you know about corn? The stocks. Stocks. Hey, yes. all right. Hey, 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 hey. Look, half my family was fucking farmers. Uh, I knew that like, don't know corn this. fields. <laughs> I didn't like hang out with them. <laughs> we didn't teach farmers. you this. Where, my family did... that I lived with, like my dad, they all worked in grocery stores. They ran a grocery store. And you didn't store. know like, this either. They're not in the ground when they're in the grocery store. They're in a fucking <laughs> potato shelf. 
a yeah, potato the dirt. shelf. The dirt didn't give it away or anything. Oh. Anyway. Oh, you know, I, yes, I know that there is dirt on this, but I never put it together. It's that, fine. That's because it was Look, in the dirt. Dan, we've got a lot to learn. Don't I, worry. Honestly, I, this is mind blowing to me because I never thought of that in my life. Knowledge All I know endless. is the ones that are in Animal Crossing, the ones that you shake from the trees, like, <laughs> like apples, oranges, trees. I understand that. Grandma's potato I, shelf, right? Yeah. Uh, honestly, but like, I had, potato, this potatoes are in Animal of, Crossing too, and they're underground. They are. Yeah. When? In Animal Crossing. They're underground. You get there's potatoes and carrots now in Animal Crossing. Have you not? Oh, played I don't. Think, I don't think I've done that update or anything. What I, the fuck? Legit, this is the first time I've ever thought of vegetables. Dude, you've played Stardew Valley, right? Oh, a hundred something hours. Yeah. Was that all fictional? I think you're taking a scythe and you're chopping stuff. Yeah, but like I some know. of it's in the ground, underground. So you're chopping. Like, when you pluck the potatoes, you're kind of just see like the, 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 like the corn. Okay, I, I, I listen. When, when you fine. pluck the the, the green part of the potatoes, there's like three to five potatoes come out of the ground. I don't remember I, plucking. I remember cutting. I and also, I don't base real life on video games. I just which assume is, like that's how the video. Some of them are teaching you things, though. I just have one more question with that, and then we can move on. Because I'm just so curious. Because I, where do you think? Where do you think peanuts come from? Like the like the the ballpark peanuts. Yeah. I don't know if the shell is a naturally occurring thing or if that happens like at the factory. What no, at the shut factory? up. Factory fuck. Oh, you are <laughs> no, fucking with us. Whatever I thought he was no, gonna say, no, it was go not that. No, no, no here's right. here's why here's why I thought right. of that. Because Girl's I for right. the longest time, until I like I met Bianca, I thought a cherry. Was just happening with the crumb? I thought a cherry. The only cherries I ever know of are the super red ones that are like you put in a diet coke. And yeah. then I found out that those are like fake. And like real cherries are the things with pits and stuff. And I didn't well, realize it's all a this. cherry though. So, it's just a, my understanding a, an is that, altered cherry. But that's the thing. The stem is like plastic, and it's like so. It's basically they make like a candy coating. No, it's not. No, it's not. Cherry. What are you saying? It's a cherry. Yeah, yeah I don't know. No, but the ones like the maraschino no, cherries. No, those are cherries. You talk about like how they like make them more red. Is that what you're saying? Like that I heard they make them more red, and the stem might be plastic. No, it is not no. plastic. That's the stem. No. Okay, no, well that got in my head. Why would they that, add like, a plastic stem? Well, I mean, so that made is... me rethink all my foods because I thought maybe some parts of them might be made artificially. So that's what made me think <laughs> okay. the shell. No, maybe they no all thing. drop this, out of the tree, this, but then they wrap them in the shells at the factory. Uh, this is okay. fine. That's the best part. As if really? there's some assembly line in a factory somewhere <laughs> where they're taking. I mean, they put skittles in bags. Shelling, it's not crazy. <laughs> and <laughs> shelling the peanuts like on it's like I love things in packages all the time at factories. It's a some little crazy. Going to a bag. Yeah, but mm. the, the the shells are real. Uh, there's no fake those. shells factories. Yeah, if anyone is ever wondering where uh, the inception for uh, uh, back to school came from, <laughs> holy shit! Uh, I was gonna quiz you with a hard one. I was gonna ask you where no, Brussels peanut, sprouts came from. The peanut ones good. I couldn't point those out in a police lineup. I don't fucking know. <laughs> Brussels sprout. <laughs> he did it, oh, officer. That little green so thing. Good. <laughs> so good. I love you so Brussels much. Brussels sprout with a cigarette and tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's been tough. <laughs> I my father shit his pants. Yeah. I've, been, I've, been, I've been putting drugs inside the peanut shells at the factory. <laughs> <laughs> Smuggling yeah, them out. Smuggle it out. Yeah. Yeah, the peanut thing is wild in a way that I could <gasps> never imagine. This is a realm I, mean, I don't just, know anything about. I know zero about your beautiful. Stuff. You're oh beautiful. my god, precious, precious man. <sighs> okay, pineapple. Again. I did not think pineapples would be. The we, best voicemail in this. Yeah, wow. we went we went places with pineapples. Yeah, uh, yeah. Beth Ch Jackalar, choose a voicemail if you dare. Okay, how do we oh. do this without breaking Dan's brain? Um, <laughs> let's do Lost and Found. Okay, this is a good one. I'm glad you chose this. Hey, giant bombers. Um, I was just wondering, what's your most memorable Lost and Found? Um, like item, for instance, I had some dental work a few weeks ago and I was on painkillers and I guess I set one aside just randomly and then today I was cleaning out my truck and right there in the glove compartment, for some reason it was in there, I'm not sure why, but there was a single painkiller and yeah. So I'm just wondering if you guys ever had like a surprise lost and found moment that uh, kind of give you a good day. All right. Bye. Thank Bye. you, caller. I also, want, I also want to point out the, the chat has a great fact here. Did you know, Dan, that Brussels sprouts, kale, cabbage, lettuce, broccoli, and cauliflower are all 
the same plant. Oh, that's grown, interesting. Grown different ways. They're cultivars of the same plant. Cool. Anyway. I know that. Yeah, pickle situation. Okay. Nice. No, I have a quick no, one for Lost he... and Found. Yeah. Uh, I, I, in high school, I drove my parents' minivan. Eventually, they just lost use for it. So I was driving that around. And um, our whole street got robbed where, like, they just went to every car on the entire mm. street and just took stuff out. And then they wow. put it all in my minivan. And they were going to drive away. But I was an irresponsible teenager. So that thing was always completely out of gas. So they drove it around the corner and parked it on the other street. So we're like, oh, it's stolen. It's stolen. And then, like, later that day, we're, like, walking by, like, wait, is that just over there in that person's driveway? And, like, yep, that was the van. So we lost it found it in the same day. And all because I just never put gas in that thing. Oh, that's amazing. Wow. So, so were you blamed for the, the <laughs> robberies? No. no, I mean, Because the van was just st- sitting over there. It's like, yeah, clearly it's, it was. I, I think the cops at that time had known that this is like the MO of some people. Like they do yeah. this sort of oh, thing. Okay. Like, people, and then steal a car to take everything. So that's like crazy. the van had been emptied out. They like put it all in a different vehicle. Oh, okay. And, like, I thought it was just stuff, like you know? full of stuff. And you were like, wow, no. it's my van. Wow, a ton of stuff in the van. No, my, Neat. They, they broke into my old broken down 1980 Malibu that I had and got my Game Boy Color out of that and stole that. So I oh, did lose man, something man. that day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, bummer. You know, I never saw it again. My uh, my lost and found story also is a GameStop story. Um, one time I was, uh, this is probably like 2000, between 2004 and 2007. I was buying a game at a GameStop and I left my wallet on the counter mm-hmm. and I just made the trend and left. And I didn't realize I had done that until 45 minutes later when I was already home already. And I was like, what did I just like? What a dumbass! I can't believe I just left my wallet. Like I, I remember seeing it. I remember playing it back and like seeing it in my head. And 10 minutes later, uh, some woman drove to my house and was like, you left this on the counter. Wow. wow. And I was nice. just like, wow, that is what an honest and beautiful thing that is to do to a, a dumb 20 something year old. So, yeah. Huh. I, uh, uh, we had a dog when I was a kid. It was this girl dog named Sweetie and it was a Maltese. <laughs> And uh, I was a kid in, in, I think, like, five or six years. And I don't know why, if my mom, you know, single mom, was working a lot. Basically, we just didn't have the dog at some point. I don't think Sweetie ran away or anything. But mom, like, gave it to a family member. Some, I, for whatever reason, we didn't have Sweetie anymore. And it had been, like, years since we had had Sweetie. And, like, three or four years later, we're, we're living in this new house. And we see, like, this Maltese that looks a lot like Sweetie comes up to like it's like in our front yard and i like i was like mom there's a dog in our front yard and i went out there and the dog was really nice and came up to us and like we're just like is this hang on is this sweetie and it's been like several different years like three or four years and we had moved from lenexa oh to olathe in kansas and we're like, what? what the fuck's oh, going on here? is, is this some crazy home uh, it's like the same county and everything ship. it's like a okay. 10, minute, 10 minute drive but we're like wait is this some weird homeward bound shit like what uh, is this some crazy dog magic thing where you know sweetie found <laughs> us and came back or whatever so it's like three days of like this dog being in our house and us being like we need to like get the news here this is crazy uh <laughs> and then we uh, saw that sweetie had a dick <laughs> ah. <laughs> right. Yeah. That is a surprise loss. Yeah, dog, yeah. Dogs grow. The original dick. sweetie did not have a dick. Important. No. Right. no okay. Girl sweetie didn't have a dick. No. Right. Wow. No. So mm. yeah, we we had to figure out what's oh, going it's on. It's a there. sad story now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shit. I love yeah, it's it. a lost dog and a stolen dog. Yeah. How long did it yeah, take yeah. you guys to realize it was a male dog? I don't understand. I mean, we're not like flipping it around, looking at the junk. Yeah. That's not what you, you do when you see a dog. It around just to make sure I mean, it's the same gender. Like, we're like, oh, okay, <laughs> you know. All right. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Devon, oh seven of the jazz. A good thing the news didn't come. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. Uh, Jason, did uh, you have a lost and found story? Uh, kind of. Yeah. It did. I I I was at a, a Street Fighter tournament. This is like the first like major Street Fighter Four tournament, and it happened in Atlanta. Um, and I, I, I got some really good footage of some like weird pop-offs and shit. Anyway, uh, I had forgot my camera in the fucking venue and I came back the next day and, and, and I'm like, did you guys find this at all? And the first guy came back and he's like, no, no, no bag, no bag. 
And, but another guy actually said, no, we've got it. And, and he's like, I want you to say that you're a fucking idiot for leaving this bag behind. <laughs> and I'm like, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, that, that footage helped me out like in my career because I was able to match it up with somebody who was doing a documentary. Um, we both have the same kind of camera, same kind of footage. Uh, so he was like, you know, come out to Evo with me um and and film shit and I, i've got an imdb credit because of it it's was that the i got next documentary yeah that that's what that it was. was when you applied a game informer i remember we were watching that yeah 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 so yeah i'd seen that yeah that was yeah nice. that that helped me tremendously in my career so I didn't lose so it. yes so thank god that that guy fucking Crazy. yeah found it and gave it back to me awesome Eesh. yeah that's a, that's a good lost and found story uh mine is that you know, working at an escape room, you find a lot of things that aren't supposed to be in the escape room. Uh, one time my coworker, not me, thank God, was running a room and somebody exclaimed like, oh, I found something. And they reached into the, uh, we had like a little uh, knight's armor, the helmet opens and there actually is a clue in there. So we thought at first like, oh, they found that little clue. It was a tooth. A human Some tooth. Kid, a Ugh. human tooth. Some kid lost their molar. So we're talking like a 12 year old, like a kid, a kid that knew better than to hide their molar in the escape room. So they just grab this molar thinking this is a prop. And they're like, this is for something. And my coworker had to be like, what the fuck? And she like came in and was like, what did you find? Just like, oh, this. She's like, oh, like, this is a human tooth. It's not supposed to be here. I'm going to come in with some Clorox wipes <laughs> and like try to like fucking customer service gloss this over. And that just became like the tooth we kept for a while because we were like what the fuck is that we couldn't get over it it was one of the weirdest things we ever found in the escape room was a tooth besides that we had a room that had a ball pit in it and people lose shit like fucking crazy in the ball pit don't put a ball pit in an escape room it's dirty there's wedding rings we had to like that were lost and we had to like flood out the pit and go through all the balls and look for people's jewelry wedding yeah. jewelry red wedding rings cell phones fidget yeah. spinners shoes you name it it's been lost shoes. in that ball pit um and the other weird thing was uh my co-worker was you know introing uh, a group and she noticed something on the floor and uh, and before the team could look down and look at it she quickly realized what it was and like scooted it like into a corner so nobody noticed there was a woman's thong on the f just the, the lobby floor lucky so someone had a date at the escape room, brought a thong just in case of something, must have gone in their purse, and accidentally, whoop, the thong fell out, or and they just didn't fell notice. Off. Or, they, or they just did the, the, the rubber oh. band thing, and they just shot it across <laughs> their... <Yeah. laughs> yeah, so that was a close one, because that, that team had a little kid, uh, so that would have been awkward. <laughs> but yeah, who's next? I believe it is Jason A. Striker. Oh no, shit! How about, how about a Japanese psycho? <laughs> this is this is a pretty good bit. All right. So I'm wearing some Baker Field, and I'm holding in my hand a copy of Yakuza Seven. Do you guys like Yakuza? Their, their earlier work was a little too Shenmue for me, uh, mm. but then when Yakuza Four came out, I think they really came into their own, creatively and artistically. In 2012, they released this Yakuza Five. I think the undisputed standout of that game was the introduction of recurring theme, Baka Me Tai, a song so mean, most people probably don't even look up the lyrics, but they should, because it's not just about finding the strength to move on after reflecting on past mistakes, not it's a all. personal statement about the franchise itself. Wow. Thank you, caller. <laughs> oh, who thank you. who here caller. doesn't get Care the joke? Comment. I don't I get, get the joke. I do not. I, I don't get they, the joke. They are quoting American Psycho. Gotcha. Oh, <laughs> that American Psycho, he's talking about the, the, the Huey Lewis. Huey Lewis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's the Huey I Lewis see. of the news speech. Yeah, changed the Psycho, now I get the name. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Gotcha. That was a pretty yep. good joke. Very, very, <laughs> I wanted to share good. it. Thank you for that caller. <laughs> oh. uh, what do you say? We probably got like one more for everybody. Yeah, one more for everybody. Uh, chat. Pick pick a little voicemail. Pick a little voicemail. Just a little. I don't know why I'm fucking... Screen shake! <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't have done that. Uh, <laughs> you will be attacked! A good choice. Hey, what's up, 3 a.m. people? It's your boy, Jake. 
Uh, Houston, yeah. I'm on my way to jury duty, so that sucks. But uh, I had a question. Do you guys take a billion dollars right now, but knowing at one point in your life you will be attacked by a gorilla? You will not die. You will be attacked. That's all I'll leave you with. All right. Yeah. Bye, I love you. Okay, but yeah. you're, Dan, yes. you have anxiety. Yeah. Of course, yeah. and, yeah, and yeah. I, 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 I say this because this is the thing. I would be living in panic. No, until it I, happens. I hire. So I have a billion dollars. I hire. A, four no, to no, no, five. no, no, no. You can't make preparations. I don't think. What? That you wasn't will part of be. It. You will be attacked. You must. Right. You must be attacked. Even you, if you, not your if you have body preparations. Yeah. The voicemail. If you have preparations, you will not be attacked. You cannot prevent the attack. No, I get it attacked, but it'd be like when somebody like moves towards the president and like eight Secret Service guys jump. I would no. get my own like Secret no, Service, no. my anti-gorilla Secret Service that are all like wildlife Howard. wranglers and are Howard. used to this. Uh, and no, no, no. I, I think yes, I would take that. A billion dollars, a hundred million would hire five highly trained wildlife security guards so, for the rest of my life. You, you know, but, Twenty thousand dollars a piece. What? Yeah, Listen, look, I don't look think, this up on Google last night. He's got the pricing right. Just so you I don't know. think you could afford that. That only covers 10 years worth of gorilla bodyguard. I, a billion dollars is a lot of dollars. Yeah, right? but a hundred. you said $100,000 is covers the gorilla bodyguards, right? No, that's probably, no, no, no. That's probably for one year. That's like, what's that? That's their that's their gross salary Wait, for all five of those? No, sorry. I didn't mean if I no, 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 no. I no, heard 100,000. I pay them, you know, at least 80 grand a year each. Yeah, times that by how many years you're waiting for this gorilla to attack you. You're not going to have any money. I'm going to be around maybe 40 more years. I can, that, That's not, cover it. you don't have any money left. You won't I, be able to Jess, afford the gorillas, gonna, the gorilla handlers. It, this, Dan's just going to be. My answer is yes. If the genie shows up and asks me that, I'll say yes. Sign me up. Yeah. The, he would definitely have enough money, but also it's not worth it. And you're I, I th crazy. I think, Once, I, one time. And then I get to like, hey, thanks everyone. Here's your bonus for protecting me from the gorilla. It was only going to happen once. Go uh, on to your next career or go retire. I, I am going to do this. Like, I'm going to say yes too, but I'm just yeah, going to be living it. in fear. I'm going to be living in fear my yeah, entire yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah. I, want, I wish I would know like if I, like, is it just out of nowhere? Like, am yes. I just like in an office building where yeah, this happens? Yeah, at any like, point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, you don't know. An airplane and all of a sudden. Probably you know. on your 50th birthday with Dan Rikers, probably. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fuck, that's, that's what sucks because at least, like, you know, you look at the calendar, you're like, oh, I have a trip to the zoo plan. This could be it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, go. And then, uh, you know, if you're just like, I don't know, like uh, at a baseball game, that'd be unexpected. Um, it's the mascot, your child's the mascot wedding. gets you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, I, you know I, mm, would i do it a billion dollars Promise you could tell any friends a billion you dollars because they would dress up as gorillas all the time yeah, and, jump out at you. and no one would hang out with you ever right well yeah, they don't, they you probably, will be attacked it's gonna no, leave your friends alone it's only gonna, for not you. gonna like do that and then like leave no, yeah. this is a well-trained gorilla yeah. yeah. It's, just, it's just a murder, like Hitman Gorilla? It's like a no, <laughs> yes. seven Gorilla? I said I was looking at the prices last night. Yeah. <laughs> Got a boomerang also, banana. It's also not I was going to say the Gorilla you. would have a red tie like 47, but that's just Donkey Kong. That's that's just Donkey Kong. <laughs> a billion dollars, there. and one day Donkey Kong will kick your shit in. Oh, no. But Donkey uh. Kong, fuck that. <laughs> yes, this, is, this Gorilla's it's, like it's Nemesis. The, Chad has it. It's, it's the yeah. one from the fucking CG cartoon with the weird ass. Fuck that. Yeah. No, no, no. All Jason, right. where do you land on this gorilla bet? Yo, yo, give me the fucking billion dollars. I will, I will take that shit uh, yeah. any any day, and I'll leave it because I'll probably die, right? So I'll leave no, it to it my children. Will not die. Oh, I will not die. Well, then fuck. Yeah, that was part of it. I'm not leaving yeah, shit right. to it's shit. Easy. I'm gonna fucking spend it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good for you. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you too. I will take the beating. I will save the money. I'm not buying some anti-gorilla force like a coward. You gotta take the beating with honor. Yeah, as, as, as outer as heaven. The spirit of the <laughs> challenge is to be beat up by the gorilla. So you're basically cheating. Um, but yeah, next and last round of voicemails. What are you feeling, Jeff Grubb? Yeah, I'm gonna do late start series. That's a fun one. Hey, Dumbers. I just started playing the Metroid series for the first time, which feels weird. But I, I'm sort of left with this feeling of like, why did nobody tell me this was so good? Um, I'm just having a great time, which is fantastic. What series you started way later than everybody else? Thanks. Bye. I love you too. Thank you, caller. We love you.
Hmm. It's a tough one because I'm like trying to think of like, I, I guess I started um, like the 2D castle. I, I, this maybe this doesn't count because like uh, Symphony of Night came out mm. and I didn't play it. But then all of the Game Boy Advance and DS ones came out. And that's when I started playing it. So maybe I was like late to that a little bit. But um, then I also did go back to the 2D Castlevanias for NES and Super Nintendo after that and started playing those and really enjoyed them. Uh, okay. That's probably my answer. Oh, yeah. You were fading in and out there a little bit. That was weird. Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, that's actually, yeah, that, that's something that I hopped on a little bit later, too, is the GBA uh, games uh, when the uh, re-releases uh, came out not too terribly long ago. Um, yeah, I booted those up, and they were fucking amazing. So good. They're so good. Yeah. Uh, such a good package, too, with, the, like, the rewind feature and shit. Anyway, mm-hmm. um, yeah, that was the first time uh, that I had played those, and, yeah, uh, I'm glad I came back to them, came back around. Mm-hmm. Mine nice. is a uh, Chrono Trigger, obviously. Yeah. Playing it for mm-hmm. the first time now. Still like it. Update. Uh, spoiler alert for a thirty-year-old game. Here it comes. Look out, everybody! Someone on Reddit said I didn't give a long enough warning, and they're full of shit. Three, two, one. <laughs> so Chrono did fucking die, but we we did some fuckery. We got a clone doll of him and now he's back to life way quicker than I anticipated. I'm a little let down because I thought they were going to draw that out a little bit and have him like come back at a climactic like end time moment, but like he's kind of just back and I'm just like, oh! Okay. It's like he never left, yeah. Yeah, it's, it was so so soon. Too soon. I wanted to feel sadder about it for a little bit longer. Mm. Anyway. Anyway. Dan? Not really a series, but like he brought up Metroid, and it's like I had the first Metroid as a kid and never knew where the fuck I was going, and so I just fucked around with it for a while. I did the Justin Bailey code, would kill Mother Brain, but like didn't really yeah. appreciate it, you know. And then it wasn't until it came out on the Wii Virtual Console is when I actually played Super Metroid. Like it was just one of those games. Oh, I damn. had a Super Nintendo, my dad's place. I had Link to the Past, and Mario World, and all that, but like I didn't play through Super Metroid until college. Um, but that's, it's weird because like Metroid Prime I played and everything and I played a little bit of the first one, but like Super Metroid's like the Metroid and it took me the longest to get around to. Turns out it's very good. Yeah, as it, yes. as it works out. Okay, okay. All right, moving on. Your last voicemail, Dan Reichert. Uh, let's go with uh, Zephead Furry. Mm. <laughs> hey, Don Crew. Dave from Cincinnati. I am reporting from the field on the car adornment front. I pass by a car somewhat occasionally. It's got on the back window a bunch of decals, a bunch of Led Zeppelin stuff. You know, it's got like some other logos and like the lantern guy with some song lyrics. But then interspersed with all that is a bunch of foxes with tits, like <laughs> a full bust of like a fox lady with big tits or like mud flat girls, but they're foxes. So I guess my question is, is Led Zeppelin a furry band? Thanks. <laughs> oh. That was a good Dan, punchline. think about it. Think about it before you really answer. Think about I it. I mean, I bet Robert Plant has worn some sort of dead animal while having sex at some point. Yes. Yeah. So that tracks. counts. That tracks. Yes, I think so. I don't think, you know, Jimmy Page is going to conventions or anything, but they've done some weird shit. I bet they're going to they're they're going to Lord of the Rings conventions at least. I feel oh, like that's that. a hop hop skip and a jump away from all their Lord of the Rings fandom. They love I'm that. I'm trying shit, to think yeah. of like their song names if there's any hints. Um, there. Black Dog. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. No. Hey hey mama, say the way you move. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's a furry furry Cashmere, anthem right there. No. Cashmere, no, not really. Yeah. Mr. Boop Star Fox makes me groove. Yeah. There you <laughs> go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> love that zip. Love yeah. that Zep. Love that. Jeff Bacalar, what's your final voicemail? I just love the phrase abnormal support. I just yeah. think that's like a great it's good. Band, uh, this, this, album name. Beautiful yes. phrase in the English language. Let's see. Abnormal. Let's see some abnormal support. What's up, Dumpers? And Jeff B, congratulations on your Class C license. I cannot believe that you are driving the big D truck. I'm kind of driving it. Sorry. Listen, I, look, I'd call, is it weird? Like, okay, I'm a premium member, but is it weird that my premium doesn't renew until 2032? I can't be the only one who does this, right? Every time you guys get a sale, I up my membership. And it's out there quite a bit. And it seems a little weird that it's 10 years now. But uh, you guys are going to be around that long. I'm looking for the content. So 
I think it's an investment in entertainment, and I'm happy and proud to, like, keep you guys going. But maybe, so, so what is it on your side that you support or something that you really like that maybe you support a little bit more normal, more than normal people do? So I'd like to know about that. Thank you. Well, I have two doing? children. Right. Yeah. Totally. Thank 18 so years. Yeah. They require a lot of support. Yeah, let me tell you. Yes. An, a, a truly abnormal amount of support. <laughs> abnormal. Uh, this is not normal. Even I after think, they're 18, believe me. Uh, yeah, I believe Jesus. I, uh, yeah, knowing what I know about kids uh, uh, and then pets, I wonder, are, <laughs> is there also an abnormal support centered around my dog as well? Um, no, but uh, I'm trying to think. Like, I, I get where the question's coming from in terms of like, the the sort of support of a thing you're super into i it's probably uh the keyboard stuff for sure just because sure. that stuff is very expensive and at the end of the day you know but look it's about what you get out of it so i i appreciate uh where that comes from and also it's a very it's a very sweet voicemail so thank you caller right, yeah, thank i thought you. that was nice yeah that was I mean, uh, I'll be long dead by 10 years from now, but yeah, but thank you. Yes, yeah, same. Totally. I mean, like, joke's on you, but yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I buy an awful lot of uh, arcade sticks. Uh, I probably have 20 in my collection, <laughs> and wow. that's that's way too many. Uh, but other than that, there's there's a band that I really like uh, called the Proto Men that, oh, nice. that I've, I've seen no oh, yeah. less than, than 10 times in at least five different states. Yeah, um, that Queen, that Queen cover album they did. Yeah, awesome. super, yeah. super good. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I'm a huge fan of them. Actually, I, I hired them to play uh, this like festival uh, that was like local to us for an old podcast that I did. Um, I'm just like, how much do you guys charge for an appearance? And they're like, X amount. And I'm like, okay, we raised the money and had them come out and, and play at a bar that we were, you know, like uh, local to. And it was fucking awesome. It was great. That's great, dude. My my kid loves that light up the night song. Oh God, yes, that's, that's my favorite song. song. Great song, hell yeah. I feel pretty strongly about wrestlers on Twitch because of how <laughs> WWE handled that, where they banned all wrestlers <laughs> from having Twitch accounts or cameo accounts. And I personally know a lot of wrestlers that were really bummed because they just really liked video games and just wanted Aww. to play with the community. They weren't trying to get rich or anything, and then all of a sudden. They can't do this thing. So that uh, sucks. even while I was working there, when I was ending streams and stuff, if I ever saw like, you know, some, oh, Johnny Gargano just left, you know, and rating, you know, any wrestlers that are on Twitch and they have to leave the company to do it, I try to support them as much as possible. Even ones that don't know how to like, or are just starting on Twitch, like kind of helping them out. I've been talking to Chris Hero lately and when Stokely Hathaway was starting off out and everything, like I, I like helping these guys out and just wrestlers on Twitch. I like to support because, you know, sometimes they can't do the creative stuff they want to at the companies they work for and you know, let them have some fun on the side. You know, absolutely. All right. Yeah. Yeah. My thing that I support too much is the uh, D&D podcast Rude Tales of Magic. It is very highly produced, very slick. It doesn't have hardly any dice rolls in it because they edit that boring shit out. Um, <laughs> and it is uh, fucking funny. It is not boring. It doesn't have these long fucking ass arcs that are just like they go nowhere and every person on this podcast is a uh new york area improv comedian so and they've all worked together before they all know their rhythms this podcast feels like a scripted comedy show it is so fucking good i have like all of their shirts and merch and stuff like that i've worn a bunch of rude tales of magic shirts on all these podcasts and stuff like that go listen to fucking rude tales of magic i'm on their patreon all all, all up in there they don't even need my money i'm just like you ought to have it you're too fucking good the only and best podcast that i listen to basically nice. <laughs> anyway that was backlars yep that was mine yep how about a last one from Jason? Oh, man. Running low. Crafty, shady, living sitch. Let's go. That's the right answer. Hey, 3M boys and girls. This is John from Bellingham, Washington. Um, I recently had to sell my house and relocate for an exorbitant amount of money, but I still can't buy a house, so I'm living in a motel. Um, my question for you guys is... Which is cheaper, what for was the, um, fuck's like, sake. crappiest, shadiest, living situation you've ever lived in, like couch surfing or sleeping in a backyard or your car. Uh, <laughs> I was kidding. Bye. 
I I broke up with my girlfriend that I was living with and I needed to move out and I just moved in next door <laughs> to our friend's house. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I didn't make it very far. Holy oh, shit. No. You just had all your stuff and you walked out. Yeah. And you saw I just walked out. <laughs> yeah, okay. I knew the neighbors and they'd let me crash on their couch. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah. fuck. Great. <laughs> I had a buddy who, who his living situation immediately changed like overnight. And he wound up shacking up with a friend of his in Hoboken who he met through... <laughs> through their dodgeball team and um she lived in like a dilapidated like really upsetting place where oh, the front door shit. didn't close oh and, god like, all this really awful stuff and he had like no other choice i wasn't in town so like you know obviously would have had to move him. but it was it was short it was short-lived but like it was yeah it was not great it was not great <laughs> i um... i was on go oh, ahead go I was on a train to PAX East that I, I wanted to go to PAX East. I had a ticket, uh, but I did not book the train for actually from Cleveland. So you still live in Columbus uh, in time. So I could only get it to go to like Buffalo or something like that. Only like halfway. And so what I just did is I just sort of snuck into the group of people who are obviously on the train to go to PAX and just gone on with them. And I'm like, Oh, are they going to actually check my ticket? And they don't check your ticket until you're actually on board. Hmm. And I'm like, Oh man, I, I have the ticket for Buffalo. I need to go all the way to Cleveland. Thankfully, they were just like, oh, I'll just pay this extra amount of money. So they, they let me on. But I didn't have a hotel room now. So I'm like, okay, where am I going to stay? I just kind of like tried to make friends with people on the train that night. And be like, hey, can I stay with you? And eventually oh, I found geez. a guy who was like, yeah, sure. He's like, you can totally just stay. He's from Australia. Uh, he put on his, his CPAP machine. I'm like, yeah, man, no problem. You're not scary to me. This is fine. <laughs> and it was all good. Australians yeah, right are so on. nice. It yeah. was very nice. Yes. They seem fucking nice. Um, I visited, uh, my, my, my ex-boyfriend had a f like forum friend or something like that, that he had known, he had met before in his life. He had visited his house, but he hadn't seen him in like 10 years or something. So we go down to like the DC ish area from Baltimore was where I was at the time in college. And, uh, we go, this is like a sleepover weekend situation. Right. So I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm cool with strangers on the internet after all, I'm hanging out with my boyfriend, but so who I met online through 4chan don't ask about it um but the uh the guy's house you come into this place and uh, you know, the outside looks pretty normal a little overgrown lawn whatever who cares but you open the door to this place and i thought for sure that like eight dogs would run up to me that's how filthy this fucking place was no animals at all lived in this house just two grown-ass men and it was the filthiest fucking house i've ever been like borderline should have been condemned it was so filthy there was a, a a whole fridge that was duct taped shut and we were told don't open that <laughs> had, oh, don't open that That's there was upsetting. a there was a dust bunny that i took a picture of because this dust bunny was bigger than my foot just chilling yeah. And like in the bathroom, there was black mold. There oh, was like they dude. they kept their listerine on the on the tank of the toilet, and the whole tank of the toilet was blue, like crusted over from the listerine I from can't. years. I can't. And they wow. like pointed us to where we were supposed to sleep over, and it was the soggiest, moistest looking bed, like sweat <laughs> stains, sweat stains, sweat stains, years of sweat stains on this bed, and the pillows were just pancake thin, oh. and I was just like. Honey, we're not staying here to fucking night. I would rather yeah. sleep outside than sleep totally. in this disgusting place. And yeah, we just like immediately were just like, oh, something came up. We got to go back to Baltimore and like bought tickets and fucking peaced out. That, that is, there is something with the way you really described that in graphic detail. There's like, when I it traumatized hear, me. <laughs> when I hear shit like that, like I just, and I, it is, there's something that it does to my brain where I just, it's like nails on a chalkboard. I just, I yeah, not great. Sorry. Well, no one should. You live like bitch. You live like this. Like, yeah, it's, you know. Look, guys. Yeah, left left alone to their own devices. Some men will uh, spiral into this madness. Was a, this was a guy who had a girlfriend. Mm. Break up with him, girl. What the fuck is this shit? <laughs> Maybe she never went no. There. Capital mm. N. No. <laughs> but I believe 
There's one more email left, right? That was Jason's, if I'm, if I'm not losing track. Yeah. I will choose an email, sorry, uh, not email, voicemail. And I'm choosing Proud. Hey, truckers. This is Connie in Rochester, New York. It's Pride Month. Something you're proud of. Make it as serious or goofy as you want. I'm proud of being an out trans woman in Kansas for over a year and for beating Bloodborne before my winter semester started in college so I could, <laughs> yeah. you know, finish that game before it was done. Have a good one. Nice. Bye. Thank you, Connie. Thank you. Yeah, I thought it'd be a fun, a fun one to a like, positive one to leave the, the the dump truck off on, not a poop one. Damn, or racking his one. brain. What is he proud of? Can't figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm proud honestly that I I took the gamble a couple years ago to do the dream job thing that I knew I was walking into some bullshit and I was there for a long time and didn't let it sap my passion for the things I love and uh, that I was able to to come back you know like I've been feeling really really good about this and you know I think I've seen the soul sucked out of others uh, and I, I'm glad I got out and I'm proud of myself for for taking the risk in the first place I would say hell yeah. Cool Good job. Who next? How about Bacalar? Uh, I'm just proud and happy uh, of uh, of all of you and everyone here. Uh, I I think uh, I can say that very confidently, and uh, I'm delighted to sort of uh, share all this with you all, and uh, share the trip, and uh, that's what I'm proud of. Hell yeah, Jason. How about? I'm proud of the little things, you know, just. Waking up in the morning, getting out of bed. That's something to be proud of, right? Yeah, yeah. I think so. All right. Totally. That's, that's me right there. <laughs> Happy to get out of bed. <laughs> oh, how about you, Grub? Yeah, I think I'm proud of uh, the, the hobby. I think I've been, I've been thinking about this a lot. I saw like a new story. Maybe it was a book or something that uh, people with hobbies do the best in life. Like they're the best at like pulling themselves up and that passion like carries uh, through, carries them through everything. And it's like, I'm glad I like believed in that in myself and just like, was like, Hey, I like this stuff with video games and believing in that stuff. And it has worked out good so far. And so I'm like proud of myself for actually believing in that. Not like saying like, Oh, you know, you were too ADHD for college and stuff like this. So, you know, what, what are you going to do with your life? I'm like, ah, we still figured something out in the end. And this is good. I'm proud of that. Awesome. Rock and roll. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm proud of being here, hanging out with you guys. That's fucking radical. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm also proud of Jan. Holy shit. He's the best manager. Can we like give yeah, a shout manager, out to Jan? Jan's Jan. Not, Jan, manager, is, Jan is, Jan is as evidenced by our slipshod ramshackle presentation here. Jan is the shit. The shit. I'm so amazed by Jan and he's the best manager. He's so fucking cool. He respects my time more than I do. Uh, you know, so that's a hell of a guy right there. Uh, and I'm proud of those those videos I slapped out real fucking quick. The the one punch man, the one punch man trailer blasted through that. The the fucking the the Keely ghost summoning Dan summoning grow situation that was like a two week long holy fuck get this shit out and done situation i'm proud of all you folks that that recorded stuff for me getting it to me so fast because you knew the turnaround was brutal that rules everyone rules and yeah it's pride month i'm bisexual hello that's cool uh and i'm proud of all fucking trans people you got y'all have put up with so much goddamn bullshit and I'm furious for you. So keep on being fucking cool as hell. And that's all I got to say. Trans rights. Yeah. So how do we wrap oh, yeah. up this yeah. dumb we truck? Can wrap up. I'm proud of everyone who tunes into our show and supports us and says a lot of kind words and nice words. It goes a long way. So I appreciate all that on behalf of everyone here. And uh, that'll do it for a very eye opening uh, debut of the voice dump truck just... yes we went all over there and back again uh thank you all for uh being here today thank you jess and jason for uh rocking this remotely really appreciate that i hope uh i hope dan and grub will come back after whatever this was my goodness um, yes absolutely well, is it, is i gotta see what he's gonna say next 
I have to see it. <laughs> I, got it. I, don't, I want to know what it'll say next. 707 Exit Flu is our phone number. Leave a voicemail. And just to get ahead of it, a little maybe uh, out in front of it, don't just ask Dan dumbass questions. That's our joke. Okay. I wanted to be the Dan joke. Reichert show. I mean, That's part our of joke. Game here, so yeah. Right? Uh, It'll happen no matter what. Just yes. <laughs> Keep the same tenor. You guys have been doing great. As you can see, we'll get there on our own. Uh, yes. That's going to do it for us again. 707 Exit Flu is the number. We'll see you next time. Bye.